Hello, and welcome to episode 19 of The More You Know, podcast about Florida State University. I'm your host, Mike, Director of Social Media for Florida State's Office of Admissions. Thanks for downloading this week's episode. If you haven't subscribed to the show yet, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find prior episodes of the show on our YouTube channel, as well as our website, admissions.fsu.edu slash podcast. This week, we have a panel of guests from the College of Communication and Information. Joining us today are Associate Dean E. Brandery and three students. Kim Sapp is the president of the CCI Community Outreach Group. Cameron Chisholm is the president of Women in IT slash ICT Sharing Experiences, also known as WISE. And Luke Weaver is a counselor at the CCI Summer Camp and works at the college's help desk. We discuss the college's offerings and get to know a bit about how each student's outside the classroom involvement has helped enhance their education. Now, on to the interview. All right, so we're here today with a a panel of students and faculty member from the College of Communication and Information. Um, I'll just let you guys introduce yourselves, um, and let's start with uh, E, because he's one of the the top dogs on campus, as I like to think. (laughs) I wouldn't call myself a top dog, but E. Brandry, uh, Associate Dean in the College of Communication and Information. Uh, I focus a lot on uh, finance and communication functions and administrative functions within the college uh, and teach uh, classes in leadership. Hi, I'm Kim. I'm an ICT major, Information Communication Technology, and I'm also Community Outreach Group at FSU's president. My name's Cameron. I'm a senior major in in Information Communication and Technology, and right now I'm also the current president of Women in IT, so ICT Sharing Experiences, also known as WISE. My name is Luke. I'm a junior information communication and technology major. I work at the CCI's help desk. I'm also involved in STARS and I've traveled with Eve on uh, some company tours. Great. Uh, So I always like to start uh, since we've got a lot of students on the show. um, I'm always really interested and I know our audience is because most of them are prospective students. Why did you guys decide to attend Florida State? And uh, I'm just going to pick Luke to start with this one. Well, my um, my father went to Florida State back in the 80s, so I've been a Seminole fan a long time. Um, in fact, he's known Eve a long time as well. I, um, I grew up with a love for Florida State, and it's always felt like a second home to me. But again, even in high school, I was drawn to it because it's a, you know, it's a great city with only, you know, I met so many friendly people, and it offers so many opportunities in IT, and that's really important to me. So for me, it was kind of opposite of what Luke says. I honestly didn't know about FSU till I started looking for universities. Um, so I'm an out-of-state student, so I applied to a couple places throughout the U.S. But then when I came and toured um, for FSU, it just, um, you know, definitely made me want to go here more. The people are so nice. And during the tour, instead of them telling you, um, oh, the school does this, this, and this, they actually tell you what you can do at the school. So you're definitely able to kind of put yourself here and see how they want you to succeed. They also have like a lot of um, opportunities on campus, whether that's the career center or the movie theaters, that's completely for free. So there was just so many things going on. For me, um, when it was time for me to start looking for colleges, I knew that I kind of wanted to go into communications because I was in a communications academy at my high school. And my brother was also currently attending FSU and he was in CCI for IT. And um, I looked into what they had to offer and like listened to my brother and his experiences with the college and just kind of got really excited about his experiences and wanted to see what it was actually like for myself. That's great. Cameron, I think it's so great. You mentioned the movie theater. Uh, This is a perfect segue into my next question. Um, I'm going to, I want to ask what is something that surprised you guys about Florida state when you got here? And the reason I mentioned that is because that's what surprised me. Um, I was all set to go to Flagler uh, and then I toured Florida state and discovered the movie theater and the cyber cafe and that is like, I'm a huge nerd. I mean, I host a podcast, right? Um, so 
immediately I like latched onto that. And I like, I, I changed my decision, like almost in the instant I saw that building. And then I ended up working there for, uh, for three years. That was how I kind of, that was my first job. And it's kind of how I got really like, uh, it's really how I fell in love with Florida state. So I'm wondering if there's something that, um, surprised you guys about Florida state, maybe on your first tour or when you got here and like started taking classes, was there something uh, a little unexpected that, uh, was a uh, kind of delightful to you? So for me, it was definitely, well, I, I kind of like the movie theater too, but the circus, like what college campus has a circus on it? It was so strange to me before I ever went. And then you can like take a class in it too. I was like, what the heck? But it's cool. So you're, you're going to love this. My dad, when he went here, he was a juggler in the circus. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Personally, I think the Student Life Center like really stood out to me. I was someone that like I did not tour any colleges before going to college. It was just kind of blindly going in based off of like what you can see online. And so like seeing the Student Life Center, like I'm someone who likes to play video games and watch movies, all that like nerd culture, I guess. And so like seeing like there's like an actual community of people that like regularly go there and stuff like that. So it was kind of cool to see because that's not something like I have back home, like it's pretty cool. I say well, I was a fan of the Seminoles my whole life. I didn't really know what it was like to be a college student and what that meant. And when I came to Florida State, you know, between, you know, having the innovation hub as a place to go hang out and to, you know, have classes and a place to work and to be around other IT students or the cyber cafe and the movie theater and being able to interact there. Um, it surprised me how, you know, um, just your ability to do what you want, how you want and make it your own. Really impressive because in high school, everything is so structured and very rigid, but you know, the openness of college has really impressed me. Yeah, that's something I definitely found. Um, I mean, I'm much older now, but it's definitely something I found when I got here is college is way more open and you very much get to craft your own experience. It's not really about like your counselor says, take these courses and you don't really have any options. Um, so, uh, you guys are all, you guys are all students in the college of communication and information. Uh, it's one of Florida state's largest college. I think it's the fourth largest college by total enrollment. Uh, so there's a lot of majors. So Eve, can you give us like a breakdown of just like what CCI is all about since it's so broad? Yeah, I'd love to. So the college has, uh, three main schools within it. Uh, the School of Information, where our IT undergrad program, ICT program is, and Masters in IT, Masters in Information, which is aligned more with the library science program that we had for years. That was online, I think like 20 years online education we've been doing before we got into coronavirus and remote. We've been doing online education here for a long time. So that was the School of Information. Uh, the School of Communication, which is traditional majors in uh, PR and advertising, uh, media communication studies, digital media production, those are in that school. Uh, and then master's programs in IMC uh, and a couple other areas. Um, and then the school, which is would align in a lot of other universities, more would say like a medical school, is a School of Communication Science and Disorders, where uh, they study speech language pathology um, on the master's level. Uh, a lot of undergrad focus in speech language, but also in, uh, you know, issues with autism and other kinds of uh, related speech disorders. So communication, communication disorders, and then information, which, you know, seems like a good mix of the three. Uh, the school was launched in 2009 or the college was launched in 2009. Prior to that, communication and communication and disorders were one entity and the College of Information was a separate entity. Um, but in 2009, an opportunity existed to merge all three programs uh, and faculty voted, everybody voted, and uh, we went forward with that effort. So we're, we just celebrated, I guess, our 10-year anniversary as a college. Um, and uh, it's been great. You know, lots of students, lots of, you know, growth over the years. Uh, I remember when we were a college with about 60 plus faculty, I think now we're close to about 100 faculty. Uh, we're 2,700 plus, you know, ma uh, majors within our program. Uh, and a lot of them in the areas of strategic emphasis that the Board of Governors focuses on. So a lot of our programs are STEM related. And that really helps in gearing up and producing students that are ready for the next generation jobs. Yeah, and I guess um, I asked the students why they chose to attend Florida State, but Eve, I'm also wondering what drew you here. How did you? Uh, how did you end up? Yeah, here? I didn't choose Florida State when I was going to school. <laughs> no, 
I, I grew up in uh, in Western New York, so I did a two year college and then transferred into RIT in Rochester and did a IT. I did a computer science degree. Um, yeah, I worked. Uh, I was actually up in Buffalo uh, looking at opportunities uh, when it was time to figure out what I want to do with my career. And uh, you know, I had actually applied to Penn State and Florida State, where the two places there were interesting openings. And you know, and Florida State was just a long shot I took. And I said, you know, let me go check it out, see what happens. Uh, I came down here in the middle of summer, where it was like ungodly hot. Like I never believed how hot it could be, but. Um, Walked around campus, like I got here a day before my actual interviews. Uh, and I remember just uh, staying uh, at the, what, what, the Round Hotel down on uh, Tennessee Street, which is called the Four Point Sheridan, which always amuses me. Uh, but I, I stayed there and then I got to campus and I walked around like for half a day, literally just from the med school all the way to Westcott and all around. I just took a look at the, uh, you know, the grounds, the landscaping, the beautiful trees. And I just, you know, sort of got a feel for that. It was a little different than most places I've been, you know, um, going to most of my schooling up North, it's a lot of, you know, bricks. <laughs> RIT is also known as Brick City. Just a lot of brick buildings. It's always cold and miserable, you know, half the year. Um, but a lot of, a lot of structures, but not a lot of, um, I don't know, I guess a feeling of warmth to it. And, and walking around this campus, I kind of felt that before I started meeting. And people were just naturally friendly, talked to a bunch of people. So I, I literally toured campus on my own. Um, I actually got onto one of the welcome buses, you know, that they have at the tour center and, and just hopped on and went on a little quick tour um, and learned a lot about campus before I got to my actual interview in the next day. Um, and then the second thing I did, which is being in Tallahassee, is the second the day after my interview, I drove um, to Ballpoint, drove to St. George Island. Uh, I drove to um, Apalachicola. <laughs> kind of did a whole loop of the whole area. Um, and, you know, in previous years, I'd come to Florida, but I'd come to, you know, Disney and I'd come to Daytona and I'd come to, uh, you know, the Space Coast. And that was what I thought Florida was. And Tallahassee is very different um, in uh, for many of those places. So after kind of getting an outdoor feel of what the whole area looked like, Leon County and surrounding areas, and then also really just walking on campus. Uh, I went back up north and, and you know, told everybody, I said, well, guess I'm applying to Florida State and I'm going to see what happens. And, um, you know, things worked out right and I got a job offer and I was here back in 2006. So it's been going to be coming up 15 years now. Yeah. So we've both been working here, I guess, the same amount of time then. That's when uh, I graduated in 2006 and immediately got a job in the Office of Admissions. So here we are. Um, <clears throat> So I know CCI does a lot to engage students um, outside of the classroom. I know even from just my master's studies in CCI, like a ton of my classes had projects that involved the community in some way. Uh, how does how does CCI manage that? It seems like a very important thing to them uh, to get students engaged. Uh, can you just speak a little to that? Sure. I mean, I think, you know, formal education in the classroom is great. But it's not everything. And I think if you can't apply the things you're learning, then I think you're missing out on a lot of what you will do in your career. So one of the things we try to stress with our faculty and in our programs is, you know, whatever you're doing, how to how to apply it, you know, whether it's uh, classroom projects or whether it's uh, engagement in the community or giving back to your community. I think that is an important piece of what we do. So making sure that your activities in your classroom, your education in the classroom has a component that impacts your local community, I think is uh, relating that information you're learning to uh, two things you want to do and, and also giving our students that practical knowledge. Uh, so we spend a lot of time working with employers to make sure they're connected to our students and doing internships and experiential learning and jobs and things like that. But then we also spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to get our students engaged both on and off campus. Um, you know, going to class is to me one part of how you learn. There's lots of other ways in which you learn. And I think you learn, but you also engage in your community, which is a big piece of how we're supposed to be, you know, model citizens is being engaged through servant leadership in the community. And that's something we stress with our students is get out there, do something, make a difference, uh, apply the things you're learning, but also apply other skills you're, you're using, um, you know, develop those communication skills, project management skills, critical thinking skills that you don't necessarily do on a test you don't do in a class project. So it's important for us to make sure our students get those opportunities, but also we spend a lot of time working with them and the student groups to make sure that we help facilitate that, make it easier so they can go out and have those experiences as part of FSU. So, 
if they stay in Tallahassee, great. If they leave, they take a lot with them more than the degree that they just earned. And, and that's that makes them better individuals in general. And I think that's really what kind of the focus of this episode is, is this um, this kind of outside the classroom engagement. All of our students here are are really involved outside the um the classroom uh, for the College of Communication and Information. And I want to I want to talk to Kim first um, about the community outreach program. So what does the community outreach group do? So we provide um, service opportunities for students um, in areas of their interest. So um, as a high schooler, you know, um, a lot of what you think about community service is just like manual labor and stuff like that. But it actually um, gives opportunities and like uh, areas of interest for students. So for IT students, they're able to go out and help the community with IT related problems, which helps give them experience in um, their major. But also, you know, you get to help the community and fill a need. Um, so, for instance, we'll travel to like the senior center and we'll help them with um, their IT related issues and we'll host a help desk session and every Friday or whatever day we decide on is best. Um, we'll just be open ears and hands to help uh, fix whatever issues they may be having. And a lot of times, you know, they don't have people who are just readily available to help them with those issues, especially with the skill set to be able to fix them. Um, we also do stuff um, like with NIMS Middle School, and we basically travel to NIMS and help those students learn about um, STEM-related things. Um, a lot of them don't really have access to like these niche technologies, and so we're able to like give them that exposure to them and then um, excite them about the STEM field. And um, we've done things with like Arduino boards, Raspberry Pis. Um, we've done things like teaching them to program games. Um, it's a lot of fun and the kids like really enjoy it. And a lot of them get um, to explore an area that they otherwise may have thought that they never could have. Uh, was there a particular moment like uh, during your community outreach? Those are one that really kind of stuck with you. Honestly, I really enjoy working with kids because their excitement, they just can't hide it. Like it's just on their face, you know, like that what you're doing is like really touching a kid's life. Like they are like because they're in their years where like these things matter to them. And especially coming from college students, a lot of times when you're that age, you look up to people who are at the college level because you're like excited to be at that point. So um, there's one kid in particular that I think of when I think about um, working at NIMS and uh, his name, we call him Steve Jobs because for some reason he just decided that was going to be his name. Um, and he'd talk about Apple as his own company and it's just the funniest thing, but like, he is so excited to participate and willing to learn and everything. And it's just a lot of fun. How do you think that, uh, how do you think that doing the community outreach group, how has that uh, changed the way you think about your classes? Well, for one, it puts what I'm doing into practice. Um, a lot of times when you're just going through a class, you don't see like the application of what you're doing. So being able to actually go out and help people with IT related things, not only does it help like your problem solving skills, which is like super important in IT, um, it just is a good hands on experience um, and being able to talk to people about IT related things. Um, you really get to st uh, stretch yourself in ways that, you know, just sitting down and doing coursework may not. So it's been really good to be actually able to go into like a real world situation, even if it's just for service. So if uh, for any of our incoming students, or I guess, you know, prospective students who might be uh, CCI majors in the future, if they want to get involved in that, how, how do they, uh, how do they join up? Um, so they can join um, on, reach out to us through Null Central, um, which has a whole bunch of student organizations. Um, we're a community outreach group at FSU, and there's a little contact button that they can click to reach out to us. Yeah, and then for anyone who doesn't know, Null Central is the, the website that basically like houses all of our student organizations. I think there's like 700 plus organizations. It's really crazy when you look at it. You could scroll through and find a club for basically anything. 
Um, so let's switch over to Cameron. So um, can you tell us a bit about WISE and, uh, and how you got involved in that? Yeah, so WISE stands for Women in IT slash ICT Sharing Experiences. Um, so basically, we're just like a support group for women on campus. Um, you're able to join it, whatever your major is, computer science. It doesn't really have to be tech related, um, but we just have different workshops um, we also do like different trainings on things. So one um, time we went into the innovation hub and we talked about 3D printing. We had different speakers come in. Um, I can't specifically re remember her name, but she was an engineer at NASA. So that was really cool. And she was just able to tell her, tell us her experiences and just give us some guidance, you know, going into the world because um, it is more difficult for women. But yeah, we're just here to support each other and give like, you know, workshops and just be able to work together. Um, I originally got um, interested in WISE, I want to say my sophomore year. It was either my sophomore year or the um, spring semester of my freshman year. And I was just looking for ways to get involved. Um, and I definitely wanted to get involved with the CCI since that was going to be my college. So I was just looking up organizations and then of course, they have ICT in the name. So I just started going to the meetings and then I got involved with the e-board and everyone there. They're so kind and they're just so nice and willing to help you with everything you're doing. And I definitely made um, a lot of friends from WISE, too. Great. And then uh, just so everyone knows, I think I think everyone knows IT is information technology, but I'm not sure everyone knows what ICT is. I think I didn't yeah. learn it until I think maybe even grad school. So can you just let everyone know? Yeah, so ICT is Information Communication and Technology. So basically, it's like a merged major of IT and communications. Um, but it's a really wide of wide umbrella of what it can cover. You can do the more tech-related side of ICT, so um, website programming, things like that. Or you can do the more communication side, so like social media management or things like that. It's really what you make it. Yeah, it's a very broad. That's something that I learned in, in my grad school. I took a couple of uh, kind of ICT focused courses and I really learned that it's an incredibly broad field. Um, so I know that uh, WISE also has mentorship opportunities. Uh, have, have you been able to participate in one? And if so, what have you gained from it? Yeah, I would definitely say it's kind of just like a mentorship opportunity with all the women who are involved with it. So one of our past presidents, um, Bridget, so I forgot where she works, but of course she graduated now, but she was the mentor to me. So I would always ask her about, you know, any questions related to the major or what classes um, you should actually take. Oh, now I'm thinking about a funny story. So I'm interested in UX design. And I actually took that class because I was wondering what Bridget, um, because I was wondering what classes to take. So I asked Bridget about it. And then she was like, oh, you should take this class. It's super, super fun. And I had no idea what UX was. So she definitely introduced me to that. Just like someone to talk to whenever you need help. Those are really like the mentorship opportunities. Jumping in on that, you know, uh, for WISE, I mean, uh, Bridget works at Deloitte in, in Tampa. And one of the things uh, WISE does is connect with alumni from our program, but also with women in our community. So, uh, at the end, uh, every March uh, around International Women's Day, we have a conference. It's now our going into our eighth year for Women in Leadership Conference. And we attract between three to 400 uh, attendees at the conference. And I would say half of, this, half of the people that are attending are students, the other half are alumni locally in the area. And almost every speaker tends to be mostly is an alumni of our program who comes back you know, to totally unpaid volunteering comes back to Tallahassee to come in and speak to the next group about lots of various topics. So that's kind of like the capstone thing that WISE does every spring. But mentorship uh, through guest speakers that are locally and then alumni that are locally. And we have a huge, as you can tell, with our communication field, both on and off campus, we have a ton of alumni in the local area where they give back to that group. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities for our students. And I think what Cameron does and Hub Ebor does is we, we create events where people can come and then build those links to those alumni and then build those mentorship opportunities. That's cool. Uh, Cameron, I know you're also involved with, uh, with something called Women Wednesday. What is that about? Yeah, so Women Wednesdays, it's kind of similar 
the whys in a bit, but it's an opportunity where women are able to come together, of course, every Wednesday. And you can just talk about things such as self-care, um, be able to support each other. It actually branches off from the bigger Women Wednesday organization in Tallahassee. But this is like the FSU version. Um, they help you making um help you with your LinkedIn or building, you know, your resume for jobs. They had someone from the Career Center come and talk in, different speakers um also from Tallahassee as well talk to us as women. So it sounds like it's really um not really so much a CCI thing as more of a kind of campus and community wide thing. Yeah. So do you think it do you think it helps bring the campus community together, getting all these women together from different disciplines? For sure. Absolutely. It definitely does 100 percent um, without these organizations, I know for a fact that my community wouldn't be the way it is now. So definitely getting involved was, you know, played a huge part, you know, in uh, everything in my FSU experience today. That's great. So and um, I'm also wondering, just for all of our prospective students, if they want to get involved in WISE or Women Wednesday, uh, first, I want to know, actually, do they have to be a woman? And and also, how do they get involved? Um, no, you don't have to be a woman, but that's just typically um, our audience we reach out to. And then you're able to get involved, like Kim said, on Knoll Central. They'll have some contact links on their emails and you can just um, become a member that way and also just use the links. Uh, there's a website that we have for the college called getinvolved.cci.fsu.edu. And in on that website is a list of the CCI student organizations with their um, social media contacts and things like that. So that's another place where students can go, go to the Get Involved website, see what's happening, click on the clubs. And then there's 19 to 22, depending on how many are registered student organizations this semester. Uh, and then there's also a group of 10 affiliated organizations that are not necessar necessarily based in CCI, but have either an e-board member from CCI or an advisor from CCI involved. And those are opportunities that we present to students, usually a freshman, the advising team on our campus presents those to students. We present those to transfer students. Uh, we push that out to classes at the beginning of every semester so that students know there's a lot of ways in which they can engage beyond the classroom in different things. Yeah, if there's one thing that the College of Communication and Information is really good about, it's definitely uh, communicating what is going on in the college. That's for sure. Uh, so let's switch over to Luke now. So I know you mentioned that you've uh, been able to represent FSU on some company visits. So I'm wondering uh, where that's where that's taken you. Well, um, with uh, the help of Ebe, we have been able to travel to Tampa. Oh, I have been to Tampa and to Atlanta to uh, to our companies. Um, companies like General Motors, Chick-fil-A's uh, Care Center, State Farm, E-Trade, um, as well as uh, smaller companies like Know Before and Align that are smaller uh, tech companies that aren't those massive corporations. But um, such an opportunity as, as an underclassman to be able to go into these offices and talk to employees and the execs there and being able to pick their minds, whatever question we want to ask, asking them. Was there anything you wish you had learned in college? What did you, you know, how did Florida State prepare you well? Um, you know, when we go talk to these alumni and being able to connect with them later and reach out on LinkedIn um, and, you know, learn what makes them tick and what makes a successful person in the industry. Uh, something that I think um, few students get to do and something that would benefit everybody, but super grateful for the fact that we can do that here. Um, so how do you get, like, how does that happen? Do you get chosen or do you have to apply for like company visits? How do, how do you, uh, how do you get to do it? Well, I was, um, kind of chosen and kind of, uh, you know, brought into it, uh, from my position at the help desk, um, where I had a lot of contact with Eve and the students who had been on these uh, tours before. And so asking them, you know, what did they learn from it? what did you gain from it? what did you see? And then I was asked, would you like to go to Tampa? Um, we're going to go meet some companies, you know, bring some suits. We're going to go, this is the real deal. We're going to go see what it's like and uh, jumped at that opportunity. And it's been great. I think um, one of the things that the most surprising things that I've learned are not surprising. I wouldn't say that the most impactful thing that I learned is um, to use a 
you know, the resources of CCI are really built to help you between the career center, going there and doing practice interviews. It's, um, or going to a career liaison and having them look at your resume and tweak your, you know, say you have a fidgety interview and they can give you tips for how to fix that. Um, you know, just things that outside of the classroom and outside of just what you can learn in a textbook that you need to succeed. So you're also involved with the, uh, the, I, the, the CCI help desk. Uh, so I assume you're helping other students, Bob, what is that job like? So the CCI help desk, we, um, our mission is to help the faculty, students, and staff, staff of, uh, CCI and, you know, the software and, um, and hardware, um, networking issues. We want to keep them moving, uh, moving smoothly. So um, everything from replacement and loaner laptops to Ethernet cords to um, I can't get emails. My emails are not sending. I can't get an Internet connection. Why can't my students see this? And students coming to us in person with their machines in hand saying, I can't, you know, um, I can't email my teacher. I can't get into my Zoom. And it, they're stuck. And without us, um, I think there'd be somewhat of a breakdown in the, in between the, you know, students and the, in the teachers in this time of everything being pushed online all at once. It's a lot to handle, but um, I think our job is very important in what we do. Do you think it's helped you in the classroom too? Is it giving you that kind of real world experience? It's given me a better grasp of, um, a, a better grasp of what it means to be an IT professional rather than just an IT student. Cause as a student, you go into a classroom and you learn, okay, today I'm going to learn HTML. I'm going to learn how to, how to make a website do this, how to make a website do that. When I go into work, I think I'm going to be talking to, you know, professionals and have to, um, I have to be on my, be on my best, you know, behavior. I have to be a stand up individual when I'm there. You know, the difference between a classroom student and then a employee student is, um, I think, the understanding of where it gets used. As a student, you think, oh, you know, there's web developers and there's this. And then you go into the there's web developers and there's the, uh, the programmers and there's the, um, you know, the coders. But when you go into a job um, at the help desk, I it really helped me understand that it's not just those, the IT professionals, we're, um, we help everyone that uses the technology, not just IT people help it. And that's part of what um, I really enjoy about the help desk is that um, I'm talking to other information professionals, but, um, you know, these are professors, these are professors and I'm a student the relationship there is, um, it's interesting. I like it. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's something I actually have a little experience with because, uh, in my senior year of high school, our, our school, uh, our district pioneered this, uh, system. I guess they maybe had a little bit of a budget shortfall now that I think about it as an adult, but they were short on it people. So they sent like six of us to get an A plus certification over the summer. And then that fall at our, that senior year, like one of us was on call each uh, each period of the day to go fix computer problems around the high school. Um, so it kind of reminds me a lot of that. Uh, and I, I really feel like I learned a lot from that. It was really interesting to like walk into a room as like, oh, I'm 17 years old and I'm here to fix this like teacher who's been here for 20 years. I'm here to fix their computer. And like you kind of flip like you have to teach them all of a sudden. Right. And it really is a, kind of a trial by fire when you're sent into an office as you know, a, you know, an 18 year old or a 19 year old just sent to an office. All right, this computer has problems. Go ahead and fix that. And then that's it. Yeah, it's definitely a really uh, useful learning experience. I can I can tell you that from at least my version of it. Uh, I know you were also you know, involved. One, Mike, uh, you know, one of the things, you know, just piggyback on what Luke does is, you know, we have anywhere between six to eight students that work at the help desk um, every semester. And a lot of times that gives them that hands on experience. Uh, and, you know, they learn the skills that tend to be actually more valuable than what we're teaching our other students, I find. And they tend to get better job offers <laughs> from the data I track is because they've been problem solving for two years. So uh, one of the ways we we use those students is actually as a way to 
help them get those practical experiences. You know, this the college tends to support students in lots of different ways. We're high interns. We are other people. We support some students that work at the innovation hub. So it's ways in which if, if we can find a way to get a student engaged in something and we have the budget to do it, we're, we will go ahead and do that as a way of giving them those opportunities both on campus. Because not everybody who's in our program can get those off-campus internship opportunities or experiential opportunities every day. And for people like Luke and, and Kimberly also works on the help desk team, you know, it's great for them because they can, you know, go in between classes and kind of like not really leave a building and still be working and, earn, you know, earning money at the same time. So there's a lot of uh, development of their own skills that happen, the professionalism that Luke talks about, you know, having to deal with, you know, anywhere from between faculty, students and staff, questions, people calling you saying things don't work, things are broken, or you did something wrong, or my computer's not working, and having them diagnose and those over sometimes the phone or through Zoom and solve those issues. That problem-solving skill, I think, is very critical that they're developing, and it has really nothing to do with the classes they're taking. It's all about how do I take a problem and then get down to the, the root of the problem and help this person solve it. And I may not have the answer and I may have to Google the answer and look other places, but how do I do that? How do I connect those two? And I think uh, the students that work both in our internship roles, but also mostly at our help desk get those experiences in, in a lot of different ways. And I think it makes them just more valuable in, in the data. Like I said, in the data I track, they get the better job office, <laughs> which is good for those two, at least. Yeah, there you go. Luke, I also know you've been involved with the uh, the CCI summer camps. What's that experience been like? And um, who are those camps for? That experience has been excellent. So the, um, the summer camp program is for high school students in Tallahassee who may uh, go to an underserved or a little bit um, you know, low-income high school. And so they may not have the same um, – opportunities to use tech and to learn before they get to college when they go to college about um, the, the tech that they use and how to innovate and take that to the next level. Um, foster, it fosters that love for technology that you see, you know, when a high school students, when their eyes light up, when their code works for the first time or their robot moves, it's a, it's a fantastic experience. So you just mentioned uh, coding and robotics. So what other topics does the camp cover? And is there a, a personal favorite that you have that you'd like to be a, like to teach? So this year, um, some topics were web development, uh, digital media and video media, media um, medical and health IT, robotics, and then mobile applications. Um, each was a, a week where the students would work on a project and learn um, basic uh, skills and um, tips and tricks for each of those disciplines and each of those areas. I really loved um, the robotics week uh, in particular. I thought that was really fun because uh, when I was in high school, robotics was a big deal to me. Um, I loved using Lego Mindstorms uh, kits, building those. Um, I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And for this camp, we used a little Arduino kit where every student got one and got to build their robot and got to see, um, you know, how they could program it, where the wheels move and the lights, you know, lights light up. Um, just for the students to be able to see something that they build with their own two hands and something that comes, all the ingenuity comes from them. It's, you know, it's, it's an opportunity you don't always get in high school. That's really cool. Uh, so we've learned a little bit about what all of you guys do outside of the classroom, a little bit inside the classroom. Uh, so now I want to move into uh, what I've now started jokingly referring to as the lightning round because it doesn't really move any faster than the rest of the show. Uh, <laughs> but these are just kind of some generic kind of round robin questions that I like to ask everybody. So my first question uh, for everyone is, uh, what's your favorite thing about Florida State? People. I was going to say, Definitely. it sounds kind of cliche to say, but it's the people, the community. Why do you think it's the people? Um, because once you start to actually, well, I spent my first year basically like in my room playing video games most of the time, but then after I, cause I'm a very, very introverted person. So I was too scared to like go out and talk to people and all that. But once I did start to get involved, like my whole experience changed from being like alone in my apartment playing video games with friends who are like back home to being able to have like an actual community and having people that I can relate to like right here and all in this little central place um, and being able to share experiences. Like it's changed my FSU experience completely. 
I would actually say that's a very, it sounds like a very similar experience to me. I spent my first year mostly in my dorm room, um, you know, hanging out with like maybe a couple people from my hall. Uh, but it was my sophomore year. I really got like dove in and got involved at the student life center and it, it changed the game completely on my college education, it, like really opened me up. And just, I think I experienced more growth through that than I did through my classes. And uh, Luke's our athlete. So how did that, uh, how was your experience? Uh, one, one of my favorite things at, um, for four state was be my participation on the lacrosse team um, as a, I'm a goalie for the lacrosse team. And I have found a, a brotherhood that um, I'm never going to lose, but past just the sports side of it. Um, Cause of course that's fun. And that's, you know, a way to get away and, you know, uh, you know, personal enjoyment. And everything, but what I love about Florida State is the city of Tallahassee. It's a great place. Um, it's you know you get to go to school in a state capital where there's always something happening. It's always you know the center of news. Tallahassee has um, activities for every kind of student here, whether you like sports or you love video games or you love movies or going out to dinner or nature, everything. There's something for everybody here in Tallahassee, and I've been here for three years now, and I've never been bored. So, Florida State's an awesome place. What about you, Cameron? What's your favorite thing? Yeah, I would definitely say a mix of both of um, Cam's, Eve, and Luke's. The people, and definitely the city of Tallahassee itself. Um, I'll start off talking about Tallahassee. It was the first time I came to Tallahassee was just to go, you know, move in and then go toward the school. I never been here before, you know, um, I'm a military kid. So I like traveled all over the U S and it's definitely unlike any of the places I've been before. Um, at first I thought it was just going to be like a huge college town, you know, just college kids doing college kid things, but it's actually, I could like, I could see myself living there for a job, um, like raising a family, there it's such a nice place to be it's kind of like in between well I don't know if there's a specific name for this but in between like a slower paced city and then a fast paced city I guess that's like a medium paced city I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I understand what I'm saying but, you know because I get bored easily so I can my um my parents live in Norway South Carolina and this this is a little country town and I could never live there so I was just hoping Tallahassee wasn't like that. So it's slow cool <laughs> enough that, you know, it's not too much going on, but it's fast enough that you won't get bored. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I liked about Tallahassee. But definitely the people from day one, um, I definitely was getting involved from my, um, since I stepped on campus, I, I just like to be like involved in different things. So there were so many different opportunities from like the 700 plus organizations and going to the involvement fair and there'd be like free food on campus. Like who doesn't love free food? So um, <laughs> there's just so many things going on, but you as a student definitely have to take advantage of that opportunity because if you don't want to, you don't have to. But then I feel like you're missing out on all the school has to offer. And then those years fly by and you're done unless you get your master's. I mean, you can still be on campus then. But, you know, yeah, you definitely have to take advantage of those opportunities that are going on. I've met so many different people and like done so many different things that I wouldn't normally do. For example, I tried out for this improv club. It was so embarrassing, but. It was, uh, I saw them at the involvement fair and I was, I was like, this will be kind of cool. So I taught my friends into doing it because it was only going to be two of us going and then we all just decided to do it and you do like improv on stage. Oh, I did not make the team, by the way. I, it, was, it was a great memory. So you never know what could happen. That's great. Uh, okay, so my next question, uh, uh, I think people are always wondering like, like, where do I eat around campus? Like, so when you guys want to get lunch somewhere, um, what's your favorite local restaurant to get food at? Oh, I love Vale. I like Vale down in College Town. Vale is a great place that's got healthier bowls, but full of flavor and it's good food. That's what I like about it. And it was started by an FSU alum. Right. I like um, Canopy Road Cafe. I really like breakfast mm -hmm. foods. French toast is the superior one. Um, so, yeah, 
I enjoy that restaurant. I'm a fried chicken kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Guthrie's is Tallahassee classic. You gotta try Guthrie's. Um, but aside from that, um, one of two of my other favorite places to go have been Bento and then also Poncho's. I've started going there and they have really good Mexican food. If I'm hungry, probably Sweet Pea Cafe. A lot of good uh, options there, but I live on coffee. So Duncan, just point me to the nearest Duncan. Yes. I, by the way, when I moved to Tallahassee, there was one Duncan in Dothan, Alabama, 80 miles away. And that was the closest one other than Jacksonville. Uh, but now we have eight in town and I'm eight times happier. I think I remember the day that Duncan moved into Tallahassee. I think I remember your Twitter being extremely yes. happy. I was, <laughs> I was in line. I was in line. Let's go open the doors. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, my uh, my last lightning round question is uh, for the students: What's the most interesting class you've taken at Florida State? And for Eve, what's the most interesting class you've taught? Well, if we're talking kind of like major courses, mine will definitely be the UX design class because it's so hands on with what you're doing. You actually get to um, work in groups on different scenarios so for example we worked on how to improve the coke freestyle machine and how that could be a better experience for people using that so that was super fun um i just learned so much in that class that i did not know and just i mean i don't mind working in teams i know some people don't like it but yeah that was super fun um but then if we're talking about non-tech related or major courses, it was definitely, I think it's called race and nationality in the U.S., something like that. It's taught by um, Professor Pamela Robbins. She's a great professor, by the way. She's one of my favorites. And that class was just so interesting because, you know, I mostly, I knew a lot of the things that they were talking about from, you know, high school and everything. But then I also learned a lot of stuff because she dives deeper into the subject of race and ethnicity, ethnicity, oh my gosh, in the U.S. And she's just a a lively professor and so vibrant that each day I was just so engaged with what she was talking about in the course. I think my favorite class was this class, um, Morals and Life Choices. And that was really interesting uh, to uh, philosophy class where you had to um, defend or write three essays to defend um, moral viewpoints that you didn't agree with, which is um, a really interesting thing to do uh, as a soft when I was a sophomore in college because uh, you know you don't usually get to you don't have to you know challenge your own viewpoint. Uh, a class that made me think and made me work, um, but also I enjoyed. Yeah, I remember taking that class. That that was definitely an interesting class to take. <laughs> um. I would say my favorite class that I've taken was probably um, IT projects. I just finished that one. That's one of the capstone courses. And um, it was really cool because it throws you into a project um, related to IT. So it could be any range of things. And um, I got to work with um, someone who was developing a VR game. And um, I did like project management for that. And it was really cool to the point where now that the semester is over, I'm still working with them um, just because it was such a cool experience. Um, I didn't want to step away from it. So um, that's been really cool. That's great. It's cool. You got to keep doing it, too. Uh, so what about you, Eve? What's your favorite class to teach? Oh, oh I've thought at least four or five different classes uh, at FSU that I've actually developed. Um, I'm currently teaching leadership and it's my favorite class and not because, uh, you know, it's leadership and I like it. Uh, I, I enjoy the class mostly because I get to see the students grow through that class. So the class is a lot of, you know, th there's some, uh, you know, information and theories and a bunch of other things in the class uh, and there's projects students work on. But what you can really see is how students function in groups very well and, and how they work together as teams and how, you know, they get to answer a lot of different questions that kind of ask them about themselves. And and a lot of students, you know, will, will graduate and become alumni and come back and be guest speakers in the class. And they'll really talk about how, 
you know, some of the, what I call transferable skills, uh, things they learned in those class that they continue to use. Uh, so to me that, that, I don't know, makes me believe that there's value in some of the things I'm teaching, but having them learn those skill sets and then continue to use them as they advance through the workforce. We, you know, we have traditional classes that will teach you uh, HTML and coding and web design and, you know, communication skills and all those other things. Those are great. Um, the transferable skills are things you use from job to job to job. And then as you get into bigger organizations where you're managing teams of people, those skills tend to be more valuable than the day-to-day core skills you learn in, in your degree. Um, and watching those start to developing people and also seeing people or seeing students who already have those skills and then just hone them a little better. I think that's that's a great process because to me, it's an ongoing class. Like, you know, Luke might take my class now and eight years from now, we're talking to Luke about something he's doing in his workforce alumni and watching that growth process of eight years, you know, to me is, is really interesting. I, I tend to be very connected to a lot of alumni and I watch as they manage their careers, five, six, I mean, this, before this meeting, I was having a Facebook conversation with somebody who was applying for a job with Gartner and they've been out five years from the program. And having a conversation with them about some of the things they did in that interview and what they're looking forward to in the potential job that started five years ago in a class. Right. So to me, it's, it's a long view of what I'm working with. So it, it's, it's kind of cool to see people grow and gain successes and, and do awesome in their jobs and build their careers. And then, and then continue to be connected through that process as FSU alums going forward. So that that's one of the reasons I like, that class more than some of the other classes I teach. Right. And then my final question for everyone, uh, if you could only give incoming students one piece of advice, what would it be? Jump out of the, and an opportunity to get involved early. Jump out early because if you wait, you're only losing time. Okay. I was going to kind of say the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> that is but honestly the best advice, yeah. probably. Take advantage of everything the school is going to offer you. Don't be afraid. You know, sometimes it's scary to do things that are outside your comfort zone. But most of the time, you're either going to learn from it or it's going to be such a great experience. So definitely just take advantage of everything FSU is going to give you. Yeah, especially as a student, you have a lot of opportunities and a lot of access to things that, you know, once you graduate, you may not have access to anymore. Like, um, for instance, the college gives a lot of software and stuff for you to be able to try out, um, which is really awesome. And it's a good time to be able to explore different areas of interest because, I mean, once you're out, a lot of those opportunities, you know, aren't there, at least at a price of being free. So um, good good time to look into different things. Um that you may be interested in and then just getting involved and meeting and talking to as many people as possible because you don't know that person that you may have sat down next to at uh, Four Rivers may end up being someone that you become friends with later down the line and you find out you have interests that align with each other and maybe you end up working with them and um, you just make a lot of connections and that's one of the best things you can do. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I would read it even from a, not from a student, but from a faculty perspective is get involved. I mean, go beyond the classroom. Classes are great, but they're not the end of everything. So get involved on campus. The, there are so many things to uh, SGA on campus. There's so many things for the college. Uh, th- there are so many ways on campus to get involved, you know, that are sports or any of our Panhellenic organizations or any of our on-campus activities or the leech or the, re- you know, the res. There's just a lot to distract you from class, which is okay. Class is not everything, but, you know, keep your grades up, but then spend your other time doing things, getting out of your dorm room, getting out of your apartment, meeting people, connecting, because I think those are the rich experiences that make up college and make up what, what you're going to do when you're here. Um, you know, even if it's virtual through COVID right now, it's still, there are a lot of things to get involved in. So do that and get out there and, and connect, because I think that's really where the growth to you comes up from. That's some great advice uh, from from Abe, Cameron, Luke, and Kim. Thanks so much for being here today, and go Knowles. Go Knowles. Go Knowles. <laughs> go 
Thanks again to Eve, Cameron, Kim, and Luke for their time. If you'd like to learn more about the College of Communication and Information, check out cci.fsu.edu. And to learn more about the various student orgs, visit getinvolved.cci.fsu.edu. You can also follow at FSU CCI on Twitter, at FSU underscore CCI on Instagram, and CCI FSU on Facebook. If you've been enjoying the show, we'd really appreciate you leaving us a rating, review, or recommendation on Apple Podcasts or whichever podcast app you use. Word of mouth is also a huge help to us, so please share the show with any of your friends or family members who you think might enjoy it. If you have any questions or feedback on the show, please send them to us on social media. We are at FSU Admissions on Twitter and Facebook and at FSU.admissions on Instagram. You can also email your questions and feedback to admissions at FSU.edu. Please include the word podcast in the subject line. As always, our theme music is the world-renowned Florida State University Marching Chiefs. Recordings courtesy of Mark Records, Clarence, New York, markcustom.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and go Knowles!